Hi, I'm Dr. Incognito. In this video, we're going to discuss how to calculate limits from a graphical approach. So the problem is to calculate the limit as x goes to c of f of x. And we'll be doing this by having a graphical representation y equals f of x in the xy plane. But first, let's talk a little bit about this expression here. x is the input variable is approaching c. So on the number line, if we draw the number c, then x is approaching c means maybe x is here and then getting closer and closer to c without ever reaching it. Uh, alternatively, we can draw x on this side and x could approach c like that. So here when we say x approaches c, there are really two different possibilities. x can approach c from the left side, or x can approach c from the right side. So not only are we going to discuss the limit as x approaches c of f of x, which is called a two-sided limit, we will also discuss the one-sided limits, the limit as x approaches c from the left of f of x, and the limit as x approaches c from the right of f of x. These are one-sided limits. Okay, so in our first example, let's take a nice curve here. And let's say that height is 2. So this is the point 3, 2 on the graph of y equals f of x. And let's ask uh, a few questions. The first one is, what is f of 3? The second one is, what is the left side limit? As x approaches 3 from the left, what is the right-hand limit? x approaches 3 from the right of f of x. And what is the two-sided limit? So first, f of 3, that doesn't require any calculus. That's just asking us what's the y-coordinate of the point on the graph when x is equal to 3. So what's the y-coordinate? When x is equal to 3, we have a point on the curve here. What's the y-coordinate? It's 2, because it was a point 3, 2. So f of 3 is equal to 2. Uh, now let's look at the left side limit. In the left side limit, x is approaching 3 from the left. So maybe x is here and getting closer to 3. And we're supposed to be looking at uh, the y-coordinates, what's happening to the y-coordinates as x approaches 3 in this manner from the left side. So if I draw a green dot on the curve here, then I'm asking what's happening to the height of the green dot as we move the x-coordinate of the green dot towards 3. So as the x-coordinate of the green dot moves towards 3, the green dot is going to move down the curve here closer and closer to the black dot. And so, uh, as x gets close to 3, the height of this green dot will become closer and closer to the height of the black dot, which is 2. So, as x approaches 3 from the left, the y-coordinates are approaching 2. On the other side, it's very similar. If I draw x there in blue, and I allow x to approach 3 in this manner from the right-hand side, then the question is what's happening to the height of the curve? So if I draw a blue dot on the curve, uh, I'm asking what's happening to the height of the blue dot, what's happening to the height of this blue dot as the x-coordinate moves towards 3. So as the x-coordinate moves towards 3 from the right, the blue dot will slide up the curve, and as x gets closer to 3, the y-coordinate will get closer to 2 again. So the answer here is 2. 
Now when we look at the answers to B and C, those are telling us that it didn't matter which direction we, uh, we approached three from, whether it was the left or the right, we got the same answer. And when that happens, we can simply dispense with the plus and minus and say that the two-sided limit is this common value. So as x approaches 3, without specifying any direction, the height of the curve is getting closer and closer to uh, 2. So looking back here, all four of these answers agree. And um, that's pretty uninteresting, but it's at the same time very important. When all of these numbers agree, we can say that f of x is continuous at x equals 3. And if you just draw an average curve like this one here without making any uh, uh, jumps or breaks or skips in the graph, then this is going to be the general situation. So now we'll look at some other examples where uh, things aren't quite so nice, where all four of those are not uh, the same. I'll begin by just making a very small change to this graph. In fact, let me just make the change right here without redrawing it. I'm going to put an open circle now at 3, 2, and instead I'm going to put a filled in dot, just an isolated dot, way up here at the height 4. So this is the point 3, 4. So that dot means that uh, this point is on the graph. It's a little bit of a strange point. The curve is following a natural trajectory, and then all of a sudden, it's got a point sort of out of place. And then it goes back uh, to that previously uh, natural trajectory. So let's ask the same four questions. What is f of 3? And in this case, f of 3 is no longer 2. That's an open circle indicating that there's a gap in the curve. Uh, but f of 3 is equal to 4 in this case. And what about the other three answers? What about the limits? The limits involve the green dot and the blue dot. As the x-coordinate moved towards 3, the green and blue dots now are going to move towards the open circle which still has a height of 2. So the limits are still going to be 2. The limit as x approaches 3 from the left is 2. The limit as x approaches 3 from the right is 2. And these are the same, so we can just say that the two-sided limit as x approaches 3 has the value 2. So the limits are independent of the actual function value. Uh, the function value is 4, but the limits depended on what the graph looked like near the point 3, 2, not necessarily at what happens when x is equal to 3. As one other example that can be immediately created from this picture, let's just suppose we erase that dot altogether. So now we have f of 3 is simply undefined. There is no y coordinate on the graph corresponding to x equals 3. But the limits are still exactly the same. OK, let's look at a different example. Let's say we have limit as x goes to 3 again. And let's do this. Here's the height 2. Here's the height 4. And let's ask the same four questions. What is f of 3? What is the left side limit as x approaches 3? What is the right side limit? x approaches 3, and what is the two-sided limit? Okay, so first 
first of all, what is f of 3? So when x is 3, we have to go up or down, as the case may be, to the curve and uh, find a point on the curve that has x coordinate 3. I've filled in this dot here at 3 comma 2, so f of 3 is equal to 2. Uh, now let's investigate the one-sided limits. x approaches 3 from the left. So here's x is going to approach 3 from the uh, left-hand side. So put the green dot on the curve above the x, and then as the x moves towards 3, the green dot is going to move along the curve towards the point 3, 2. So as x moves towards 3 from the left, f of x, which is the y coordinate, I didn't label it here, but this is a graph of uh, y equals f of x. So the y coordinate as x moves towards 3 is heading towards 2. Uh, now we get something different on the other side. As x approaches 3 from the right, so here we'll put x down in blue, and we'll let x move towards 3 from the right side. So a blue dot on the curve corresponding to this x coordinate would be here. And then as x moves towards 3, this blue dot is going to move up the curve towards that open circle. On the right side of 3, near 3, the curve is near this open circle, which has a height of 4. So as x approaches 3 from the right side, the limit, the y coordinates are approaching 4 f of x, that's the y coordinate on the graph. y is equal to f of x. And so finally, this is a two-sided limit. So this is asking what's happening as x approaches 3 to f of x. What's happening to the y coordinates as x approaches 3? And you can see that these two answers here are different, and so we can't make any conclusions here. What's happening as x approaches 3 depends on the direction. From one direction we get one answer, from the other direction we get a different answer. So these are different, they do not agree, and in such cases we say that the two-sided limit does not exist. So it does not exist because the one-sided limits are different. The one-sided limits are different. Okay, uh, let's look at an example with a vertical asymptote. Okay, so first, what is f of 3? Um, there is no point on this curve corresponding to x equals 3, so f of 3 is undefined. Uh, what is the limit as x approaches 3 from the left? So, put x on the left side of 3, let x approach 3. So we're looking at the height of the dot, again, this is y equals f of x. So f of x, those are the y coordinates on the graph. That's very important. The x coordinate is happening, uh, is um, approaching 3 from the left. The question is what's happening to the y coordinate. So here's the dot. As x approaches 3 from the left, this green dot is going to move along the curve. As the x coordinate moves closer to 3, the y coordinate zooms up and up and up. We have a vertical asymptote. So the y coordinate is going to grow without bound. It's going to get across a hundred, a thousand, a million, etc. So the answer there is uh, infinity or positive infinity, parenthesis. 
And the same thing happens on the other side as x approaches 3 from the right. So here's x, make it approach 3 from the right hand side, so we have a blue dot on the curve. And the question is, as x approaches 3, uh, what happens to the y coordinates of this dot? As the x approaches 3, the blue dot will move along the curve. And again, we can see it going uh, up and up and up. It's growing without bound to the y coordinate. And so plus infinity. And now the one-sided limits agree. They're, they're not numbers, but plus infinity on both sides. So we could say that the two-sided limit is also plus infinity. Um, let me change this graph ever so slightly. Well, actually, I'm going to make a major change. Let's just flip that right side upside down. So here's y equals f of x now. And let's ask those same four questions. f of 3 is still undefined. The left side limit, I haven't changed the left side of the graph. This is 3 again. So that's still plus infinity. But I've changed the right side, I've turned it upside down. So now when x approaches 3 from the right, the blue dot on the curve, as x moves towards 3 from the right, the blue dot is going to follow the curve. And now instead of going up like it did before, it's going down and down and down towards minus infinity. So that this limit is now minus infinity, and plus infinity and minus infinity are different, so the answer in part D, the two-sided limit, would not exist. So the two-sided limit in this last example does not exist for the same reason here, because the one-sided limits are different. Okay, so there's a, a look at uh, investigating limits uh, from a graphical perspective. Thank you for watching.